What's going on everybody? It's your boy Kilo Loco and today we're going to be working with Android Jetpack Compose and showing you how to work with the camera so that you can take pictures in your Jetpack Compose project. This is the project that we're going to be working with. Um, as you can see right here, we are given a operating system prompt to where we're first uh, asking for permission to use the camera in our app will allow that at that point we'll actually be able to see what the camera sees so this is what uh, the emulator will show and you can be able to look around and you can actually like take a picture and once you take that picture we'll actually be using the coil dependency in order to render this picture into our jetpack and post project so if that's what you're interested in that's all coming up right now all right, so first things first, we need to head over to the Android manifest file and add in the required camera permissions. Next, let's go back over to our main activity uh, .kt file. And next, we're going to add the request permission launcher right here at the top. And this is going to be responsible for taking in whatever permissions that we're requesting. In this case, it's going to be the camera and it's going to give us a block that we can work with. So as you can see, we're going to be provided a Boolean, which we can switch off of. Um, and then we can, you know, set up the different uh, logic based off of what happens. Now let's go down and add the request camera permission function. And this function is going to be responsible for checking what the current permissions are for our app. So we're going to first check to see if the, the camera permission is granted. If so, then we know that it has been previously granted. Um, if not, then we need to request and show some type of rationale, uh, essentially showing some type of dialogue. And then that's when we will uh, simply log out this. This is, where, this is where you'll show like an alert. And if it's neither one of those, then we'll show the OS dialogue to the user where we're going to be requesting requesting camera permissions. From here, we're just going to go back up and make sure that we call uh, the request camera permission in the onCreate method. And if we build and run, we should actually see that prompt show up in the emulator. All right, here we go. And as you can see, we get the prompt, so we'll obviously allow. Now head over to the app build.gradle file, and we will add the dependencies for camera X and for the icons that we'll be using for the, the capture photo button, like so. And let me just fix this indentation right there. And as you can see, camera X and icons. The icons one is completely optional. It's just gonna be used to show a camera snapshot button um, at the bottom of our screen. From here, let's create a new file called cameraview.kt and let's start adding in some code. So in our new file, what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a new function called take photo. So as you can see, there's quite a lot going on in this take photo function. We're taking in a number of parameters and then we're also doing a lot in here. So we're taking in several parameters which will help create the output file as well as um, construct the image capture um, take picture method. And let's just walk through it real quick. So first we're creating a photo file with the output directory. And then we're also setting up a simple um, time format which it's going to be the, the timestamp plus .jpg. We have the output options, which is taking that photo file and building uh, the image capture output file options. We'll then pass those output options to the take picture method on our image capture object. And this, this method also has the callbacks in it for the on error. So if we get an image capture exception, uh, we can pass that, that error through the callback or in the event that we do get a successful save of a, of a photo, then we can pass the, the URI of our photo file up through the callback on the on image captured uh, function. Now, before we get into the composable, what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a convenience method on our context, which will allow us to get the process uh, camera provider. So let's go ahead and add that here at the bottom. Now, the reason why we're adding this uh, this convenience method uh, get camera provider is because we are actually going to need the camera provider, which is of type process camera provider. And that in, in order to get that, it's an asynchronous call. So what we're going to do is we're going to create this suspended uh, coroutine, which will allow us to use this method in line and keeping our code looking real nice. So now we can actually add the composable. So now here at the top of the file, let's go ahead and add our camera view function, which is gonna be a composable function. Now there's quite a lot going on in this uh, camera view composable function. So let's go ahead and break it down again. And we have 
three main sections. The first section is essentially the setup, all the different properties that we're gonna need. This is gonna contain things like which direction the lens is facing, we're accessing the context, the life cycle owner, things like that. Then we also have the preview and the preview view, uh, which are going to be used to display the image that the camera is seeing. We also need to keep the preview and the image capture in memory, um, in like the composable memory, right, um, a remembered state, so that whenever there's an update, uh, compose knows to, re, uh, to recompose uh, each of those uh, views. And then we have the camera selector, which is something that can essentially be updated with the lens facing if you were to add that type of functionality in here. The second section is the launched effect section. So this is the part where we're going to actually use the get camera provider method that we used on this convenience method that we added down here, right? And what we're doing in what we're doing here is first we're getting that camera provider, we're unbinding everything that might already be bound to it, and then we're binding the life cycle, the camera selector, all those things to this camera provider. We're also, we're also um, updating the preview with the set surface provider, and it's going to simply be using the preview views set uh, surface provider. So it's gonna be using that to uh, show what is actually happening um, are what's being processed by the camera on the screen. Lastly, we have our third section, and this is all the composable part, right? So this is gonna be the section where we're actually building out the screen of what we're seeing. And we're gonna start off with a box because we need to lay um, things on top of each other. And we have the first thing, which, uh, which is gonna be the Android view. It's a custom view that we're building, and it's gonna essentially be our preview view. And we're gonna make sure that that's gonna take up essentially the full screen. From here, we're gonna lay a icon button on top of that. And this is where we're gonna actually be taking advantage of the icons, um, the icons dependency that we added in our build.gradle file. And you can see that right here that we're creating this icon, we're making it look nice where it's gonna have a little ring around it, all that greatness. And then obviously this icon button is going to call the take photo uh, method that we just created down here below. So that's everything that's going on here. And now what we can do is we can head back over to our main activity because we're ready to start implementing some of these, uh, uh, our composable view. So at the top, let's go ahead and add some properties that will help us uh, maintain state. So we have a file, which is gonna be the output directory where we're storing the actual photo. We have the camera executor, which is gonna be uh, specifically designated for the camera. So we don't have to worry about um, blocking the main thread. And then we have uh, this Boolean, which is going to be a mutable state Boolean. And we're gonna use this to determine whether we should be showing the camera or not. Down at the bottom of our main activity, let's add a couple of methods that are gonna make life a little bit easier. So the first one, is going to be this handle image capture method. So this is essentially what we're gonna be using whenever we take a, a picture and we call uh, that method um, when we use our camera view. So whenever we call this on captured uh, method from our camera view, we're gonna simply pass in this handle image captured. And so far what we're doing in here is we're simply saying that we should um, make the camera preview go away as soon as we take a picture successfully. We're also gonna be logging the URI, the URI to log cap. Uh, the get output directory, pretty self-explanatory. It's gonna allow us to get the output directory very easily and um, it's gonna provide us with uh, a file type. And then lastly, we just wanna make sure that the camera executor is shut down uh, whenever this, uh, this view is destroyed so that it's not running in the background if you decide to use this in a larger project. We can now show our camera view in our, in our app. So let's go ahead and replace this text inside of the onCreate and let's go ahead and replace it with this, um, this conditional flow where it's only if should show camera value is set to true, which right now it's set to uh, false by default. Um, only if we have this set to true will the camera view be shown. And that's when we're actually passing in the output directory, which we had um, the variable up here. Same thing with the camera executor. And then, uh, as I said, we're gonna be calling handle image uh, capture the method down here uh, whenever we do the on image capture um, callback. Now, right now we don't have the output directory or the executor added in here, so we need to fix that down here at the bottom. 
and here we go. So now we will have a, a valid output directory as well as a valid camera executor. And those should actually pop up before we ever show the camera because this line of code uh, should run a little bit faster than this these lines of code, essentially. The last thing that we need to do in order to finish this whole uh, photo capturing process is to make sure that we are showing the camera when we have been given the proper permissions. So first we're going to go to the request permission launcher and assuming that we do have it granted, what we'll do is we'll simply update the should show camera value to true. And uh, we also need to update one more place, which is the request camera permission. And this is going to be um, up here if it was previously granted. So uh, this block of code will only be called when uh, the user is initially prompted and then this uh, block of code will be called um, if the user has already provided permission for the camera access so then we want to make sure that we show the camera as soon as the app starts up essentially so let's go ahead and run it and we should actually be able to see our camera preview all right, here we go. Remember, we already provided uh, permission previously. And as you can see, we can see the camera preview. So this is the one that the emulator gives you by default. And you can move around if you hold shift and just start looking around. Uh, I think on Mac, it's like um, it's like option or something like that. And you can look around. But essentially, we should be able to take a picture right now. And remember, our logic at this point is if you take a picture, then the preview should disappear. So we take a picture and of course it's gone. Now, if we took it, if we take a look in LogCat, we might be able to find the URI. Um, essentially, it should be in here, right here. So the URI is, is provided right there, and we can see that we have successfully captured the image and it's saved somewhere. The last piece of this puzzle is to simply show the image with Coil. So let's head back over to our build.gradle file, our app build.gradle file, and add the dependency for Coil. All right, so now we have Coil in here. It's uh, by far the easiest way to uh, show images in a Jetpack Compose project. We'll head back over to main activity now, and let's add two more properties up here at the top. I like to keep all my properties towards the top. And what we're gonna add in now are uh, the photo URI. We wanna make sure that we're storing the photo URI. Uh, once we capture it and then we have another mutable state boolean which is going to be set to false by default and we're going to um, essentially use this to determine when the photo should be shown on screen since we're only using one single screen so to put these to good use let's go down to the handle image capture method that we created earlier we go down we paste it in here and now whenever we capture an image we're being passed the uri so now we'll be able to store that uri and then we'll also let compose know that hey we should we should now recompose the view and we should essentially be showing the photo with all the logic in place we can go back over to our set content area and just below the sh should show camera value um co uh, conditional we can add another conditional uh, should show photo with the value um, whenever it's true. And the awesome part about this is this is the native native image and this is the part that um, Coil is providing to us. We just simply provide a painter and pass in the photo URI. So if we go ahead and build and run, we should, we should now be able to take a picture and show it on the screen as well. All right, here we go. So now, once again, we have our preview. Let's go ahead and uh, make sure that we can take a picture of this little dog, I think I could move backwards or something like that. If I do this just right, there we go. And let's go ahead and take a picture of our dog and bam, and now we have a photo of our dog. So that's essentially it. It's extremely hard to figure out how to take photos in Android from an iOS developer's perspective, but hopefully this video will have breaking it down in a easy consumable format to where you can, you know, start adding the camera into your projects from scratch and knowing exactly how to do it um, all using Jetpack Compose. So if you like this video and you want to see more like it, make sure that you leave a comment down below. I'll keep an eye on what you guys are requesting and try to make videos based off of what I see in the comments. Um, I really appreciate your time and make sure you go out there and keep coding passionately.